We've got to understand what it means to be kind. And pay it forward coffees are not going to cut it. Kindness isn't about hearts and flowers, sugar and spice and all things nice. I am talking about the pointy end of kindness. I am talking about the courage to be kind. It's been mistaken for weakness. It's been mistaken for being gender specific. You've got to be cruel to be kind. How ridiculous is that? Good guys or nice guys finish last. It goes on and on and on. And our parents told us, if you have nothing nice to say, don't say anything. What does that mean? Excluding somebody, ignoring them. I tell my girls, if you have nothing nice to say, dig a little deeper. How hard can it be? Apparently it's pretty hard. The USA is known as the home of the brave. And your reverence for those who serve is admirable and something that I truly admire, that and your constitution. And you have to think about those who serve. They're taking on a role, a job, knowing that at some point they could put themselves in harm's way. For people they don't know. And that takes courage, yes. And what I'm about to say is not an indictment. It is a social observation. Because in your country and in mine, our best and bravest sought the safety of silence while their own were being beaten, bullied, discriminated against, humiliated, raped, and abused. And should someone have the courage to speak up, they would circle the wagons, label them a whistleblower, and cast them out. And that's for people they do know. And we talk about inclusivity. And I think it's a waste of time. We talk about it that much. We talk it to death. It's in everything. But we don't get it. We just put it in something because we're complying with what's a good value. But we don't get it. We'll only ever get it if you understand the power of exclusion. And we're really good at that. In fact, we've been doing it forever. We know that is the best way to punish somebody is to exclude them. Since man had five, the chief doesn't like you, you're banished. If the, if the empire doesn't like you, you're exiled, poor old Napoleon. School doesn't like you, you're expelled. Family doesn't like you, and this is a great one, you're disowned. Church doesn't like you, you're excommunicated. And eventually what we'll do, if we don't like you as a whole because you've been misbehaving, we'll remove you from the community and put you in prison. And if you're a tough, resilient, drug-dealing rapist and you still don't get it, we know how to do your head in. We're going to punish you. We're going to put you in solitary. Because it doesn't matter how tough you are, that is going to hurt you. But that's not where it starts, is it? It starts with the words, you can't play with us. It's a little girl or a little boy who goes home to their mum and dad and says, What's wrong with me? Why don't I have any friends? Why doesn't anyone like me? And if we have kindness on our agenda, and this campaign 
is successful, there'll be a voice. A voice that speaks up with the courage to be kind, putting their popularity at risk, that sense of belonging that silences so many. But I stand here today and I'm reminded and inspired by a young country, a young nation, not that long ago, declared that all men are created equal. Now, not everybody at the time who signed that, I guarantee you, did not necessarily truly believe it, let alone understand it, but all men created equal, eventually found its way into the laws of the land and into the hearts and minds of a nation. And I know it's a work in progress. I know it took a long time for women to get the vote. I know it took a long time to remove the whites only signs. I know there is stuff going on. But something unexpected happened. That declaration found its way, had a ripple effect and it found its way across the ocean to a young boy on a farm in South Africa. Called Nelson. And to the streets of India, to a law student called Gandhi, and to the son of a preacher in Atlanta called Martin. One of them, can you believe this? One of them had this crazy, ridiculous, unshakable belief that by sitting in prison for 27 years, there would be a time where he would see an end to apartheid. Another one had an unshakable belief that he could take on the might of the British Empire's brutal injustices through peaceful protest to gain independence for his nation. And of course, the other one closer to home had a dream, a dream to which he paid the ultimate sacrifice. Who were these audacious individuals who grace our pages of history? Who was Martin Luther King before he was Martin Luther King? And indeed, who was Gandhi, Mahatma Gandhi or Abraham Lincoln or Martin Luther King before they became household names. They were just ordinary people. Ordinary people who had the courage to be kind, that could not sit by in silence whilst there was brutal injustice. They embraced that all men were created equal. They couldn't do nothing. And maybe our declaration for a kinder world might find its way to a school in Pakistan to a young girl called Malala who had the courage to speak up because all she wanted to do was have girls permitted to read. Despite threats of violence to her and her family, kindness is courage. Never mistake it for weakness. Real kindness is often the path of most resistance. And in the home of the brave, dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal, we need to find our courage if we're going to unite the great American divide. Thank you.